Hey, how's it going? So I'm going to show you how to do an oil change on a first generation Mini Cooper. This one's an R53. This is the very first video I recorded of this car when I first got it. It'll be the last video I post about this car, unless if I find some more hidden footage somewhere. So the first thing you want to do is put the car up on ramps or lift it with a jack so you can access the oil drain plug. If you use a jack, use jack stands or blocks of wood to catch the car if it falls because it's low enough to the ground that it will crush you if it falls and if you're under it, even with the wheels on. So this engine takes five quarts of 5W30 synthetic oil. Depending on the climate in which you live, your car may need a different viscosity of oil. All you need to do is look for that sticker in the engine bay. If your car was purchased in the area where you live, and that sticker should be pretty reliable. You could always go in the owner's manual and look for a chart like this. It'll tell you what kind of oils will work with your engine in different climates. Don't pay attention to this chart, this is just an example. You need to look in your own owner's manual. The oil filter is located right here next to the header, so you'll want to let the engine cool off a little bit before you do this, but not too much as the oil will flow out of the engine better when it's warm. They make a low profile socket to remove the housing, however you can use a 36 millimeter socket with a swivel head, breaker bar, or ratchet. Here's what the oil filter looks like. And it comes with a new gasket for the oil filter housing and a new copper gasket for the oil drain plug. So you'll want your drain pan ready and you'll need a 13 millimeter socket to remove the oil pan drain plug. And that drain plug is located right here. You'll want to drain the oil pan before removing the oil filter. And it's good to open the oil cap on the valve cover to allow air in while this oil drains out. It'll help it flow better. It doesn't take much force to break the oil housing free. And then you should be able to get it off the rest of the way by hand. Some oil might drip out of it, so move your drain pan and catch that extra oil. Then you can clean the oil filter housing out with some brake clean and a shop rag. Next replace the gasket on the oil filter housing. It's just a giant o-ring so it's easy to do. The filter can only be installed one way. You can see there's a large hole on one side of the filter. And the other side of the filter has a small hole the large hole goes into the oil filter housing. And like with a traditional oil change, you want to make sure there's a bit of oil around the rubber o-ring before installing it onto the car. I eventually got a ratcheting long handled breaker bar which was much nicer to use for installing this oil filter housing than this non ratcheting one. The important part is not that it's a breaker bar but that it has a swivel head and a long handle. Just spin that in until it stops spinning. You do not need a lot of force. You can torque both of the oil filter housing and the drain plug to 18 foot pounds. I just hand tighten these. Then you can finally pour in your new oil.
once you start getting close to the recommended amount of oil, stop pouring, check your dipstick, make sure you're not overfilling it. The end of the dipstick has two holes and hash marks in between the two holes. The oil level should be in between the two holes, not above the upper hole and not below the lower hole. As long as those hash marks are covered with oil somewhere, then you're good. I like to go all the way to the top, just below the upper hole. You should do this on relatively level ground, which is why it's better to use a jack to lift the car because then you can just let the car down. Whereas with ramps, you need to push the car off the ramps or fill up the oil a little bit and then start the car and drive it off the ramps and then top it off on level ground. Then it's a good idea to start up the car, let it run for a couple minutes, shut it off, check the dipstick again, make sure everything's good. Then you can do the oil light reset procedure, which you'll have to look up in another video. I can't find the complete footage for it, but if I ever do, I'll post it. That's it for this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload videos. I'll have links in the description to the products I used in the video. And thank you for watching.